Hello, hello everyone. My name is Jenny Gardner. I'm one of the math coaches with the academic support team here at SNHU. Welcome to this guide on the correlation coefficient. Spelled right here, correlation coefficient. Today, we are going to talk about what correlation is. We'll solve the correlation coefficient and go over what each part means. And finally, have an example. Let's start, as always, with definitions. What is correlation? Well, correlation is all about a relationship between two variables. In this case, we're talking about a linear relationship between x, the explanatory variable, and y, the response variable. What we're trying to figure out is if x is having a correlation with y, if they are changing together. So x is the line down here, and y is the vertical line. So x is horizontal and y is vertical. And as x is changing, let's just put one, two, three, four. As x is changing, increasing, what's happening to y? Is y going up? like this, or is y maybe not going upward and instead going downwards like this, changing in a negative way, going downwards, or maybe y isn't responding at all. And that would be where it had no change and we sort of saw y and x relationship as none. There would be no linear relationship. And so that would look like this, where there's no change and it's just kind of all over the place, no line being created, no diagonal. Instead, it's just an average nothing change all the way across. No increase, no decrease. And so what we're looking to do is see if it has that linear relationship or if it doesn't. So remember, you're looking for diagonals. So you want to know, is it across going upward? Is it going downwards? Or is there no change at all? But that's just visually. And we can be more precise than that with numbers. And so when we're looking for a simple linear relationship, we're looking to see how correlated it is. And to do that, we use R, the correlation coefficient. And R can be 100% correlated at one or negative one. This would be when the graph is going, one second here, when it's going exactly downwards in an exact diagonal down, that's a negative one R. And then if it's going exactly upwards in a diagonal, perfectly, then that's a correlation of one positive. And then at zero, that would be the graph I drew where it has no relationship and it sort of has no change involved. And it's basically all over the place. And X and Y are not creating an upward or downward. And instead it has no change and just shows a straight line across. And R can be any number in between. So at 0 0.5, we're looking at it being 50% correlated. And that would be a negative on this side, but it's still 50% correlated over here at the positive 50. And that would be a 50% positive correlation. That's halfway. And the stronger or higher the number is, the closer to one, the stronger a correlation is. You want it to be close to one or negative one to say that they are linked, to say that there's a relationship between X and Y. So that's what we're looking for. And visually and your correlation coefficient, they should match. If you're looking visually and you're seeing a correlation, it's probably a strong one. If you're looking visually and you're seeing no real link between them, it's probably a very, very weak correlation or not correlated. And then if it's in between moderate, you might see some change, but you might not see significant change and significant line definition. 
with your eyes. So you really want to go with the number to really see how correlated it is. And remember that these are all related to percentages. So we'll talk about that. This is how to solve for R. Very big calculation here. So let's just go over this a little bit and talk about what it means. But we're going to get our data, utilize the formula in Excel, and then voila, we will have our R. But I want you to understand what it's doing as well. So this says take every X and subtract the mean of X. And then for every single value, you have to do that. So if you have 70 numbers, if you have a thousand numbers, you would have to do that a thousand times. And then a thousand more times, you're gonna have to divide by the standard deviation of X. But you'll also have a thousand Y's. And so for a thousand Y's, you would take every Y a thousand times and divide, subtract, not divide, subtract the mean of those thousand numbers and then divide by the standard deviation a thousand times and then you'll have a thousand x's and a thousand y's and it says multiply each of them together and then you'll end up with a thousand numbers that have been multiplied together and the e says add them up and then that's when you get one number so you start with a thousand x's a thousand y's subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation for every single number then multiply all the x's and all the y's, all the results you've just found together, and finally add them all up. And once you've done that, you can divide by n minus 1. Now doing that for a small amount of data like 7 numbers or 10 numbers is realistic. Doing it for 100 numbers, 1,000 numbers, is it, it seems like it might be asking for you to make an error if you do it for that many numbers. And that's why we have technology. So in Excel, we can do this, and it's totally easy to just run it and get our value and be able to get our R correlation coefficient very easily. So let's go see how to do that with our example. So we have this example here, and we want to know what is the relationship between the explanatory X values and the response Y values. What is the relationship between these two variables? We'll look to see if it's a positive, negative, if it's a strong, moderate, or weak correlation. And to do that, we're going to find the correlation coefficient and decide if x is correlated to y. Because the reason we want to do any of this stuff is to see, can we predict the final grade, up here, final grade, based on the hours studied, hours studied, right here. So our studied is our explanation, our x, because it's the one we're going to use to predict. We're going to use that to predict. And y is the final grade because it's one we're trying to see if it's responding. Is it responding? Can we predict it? So the whole point is to predict y using x. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to try and do that. But we don't know if we can. We're going to find out if we can do that. That's the whole reason we're doing it, though, is so that we can see if it's correlated and if we can predict. Over here, I have our values. So visually, I'm just going to highlight this. I'm going to go to Insert. And I'm down here under Charts, I'm going to select the one with the dots. That is the scatter chart, scatter plot. I see my values. I see they're sort of going upward. And just to make sure, I'm going to add a chart element called a trend line. And I want it to be linear. So I can see that my line is there. I have all my data surrounding it. Okay. So visually, I have my graph. And remember, all I did to do that was select the numbers, insert the graph. Okay. But I want my R, R, which is the correlation coefficient. I want my R. So to do that, I hit equal, C-O-R-R-E-L, coral, standing for correlation. And then it says array one, array two. Array one, comma, 
array two, x comma y. So if we see x comma y, like just like that, x first, y second, and then I hit enter. Okay, my R says 0 0.91, 0 0.917, almost 0 0.92. What is that in a percentage? Well, I can look at it and figure it out, or at the top I can click percent. And now I see, well, it's 92% correlated. I have to be on the box to click some percent, so make sure you're clicked on the box to see the percentage. But if you need the number again, you go back and you hit number, number or percentage. So this is 92% correlated. All these pieces of data are close to the line. They are making a diagonal and they're creating this relationship between X and Y and they're showing me that I am 92% correlated for this data. So this is a strong correlation and it's positive, it's going upward, an upward diagonal. Not a downward diagonal, but an upward diagonal. So this is a positive number. So I am 92% correlated, a strong correlation, and I'm looking at a positive number. So this is a positive, strong correlation between X and Y. So thinking back to this question, it says, can we predict the final grade using the hours studied? Yeah, because X was correlated to Y. It was a strong correlation. It was a positive correlation, a positive strong correlated. It was 92% correlated because our R was 0 0.92 if I round. And so can we predict the final grade using the hour study? Based on this, yes, we can. How you can do that can be found in a future video that you can go and look for in the video description. Thank you so much for watching Academic Support Guide on the Correlation Coefficient. And please do read that video description for further resources, including how to use the prediction equation. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.